Last Pint Productions presents the New Way podcast. The New Way contains adult content, and new episodes are released most Wednesdays. So back off, man. We're professionals. Listener discretion is advised. So you were in Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain. Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Everybody wants to be naked and famous. Everybody wants to be just like me and naked. Will you help teach me about this? What is it? A new way. Hello and welcome once again to the New Wave Podcast. We break down pop culture so you don't have to. I'm your, I'm your host, Matt Shank, joined in the studio by Benny Dubs. What's up, little people? And coming in hot from the greater Los Angeles area, specifically Pasadena, Mr. Nikki S. Little little people. Is little this people. like a Randy Newman episode? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yes. short, people? short people, which uh, short short people, shows some respect right. to, right. the, to the rainy day. I love <laughs> <Billy>. little people. <laughs> I, <laughs> little people. <laughs> what is funny is we all started this podcast laughing, and I'm not entirely sure we're all laughing at the same things. There were like too we many are. things happening, but the main thing is and we're going to start ben with this and I are anyway. Right now, yeah. So Ben, Ben, uh, in in new way fashion, is basically trying to get any kind of medical malady that he can, so that he can urge our our fans and listeners out there to get themselves checked up. But Ben. Uh, is sporting some. I'm gonna keep trying. Some amazing black stockings that are giving me like, are you trying to seduce me, Mrs. Robinson? Vibes every time he tries to pull it up. But Ben, tell us about your latest time in the hospital. Yeah, so apparently, uh, my cancer treatments actually provoked a uh, a fucking blood clot in my right leg. So, good lord. Yeah, I went to uh, well, it was one of those things where. Uh, we were dancing to Cotton Eye Joe, as one would do. Um, one of those things. W- w- with with my daughter. It was more like a. And, it was like a, a a feverish like ritual. Yes, it exactly. It very like. David Lynchian. Like, so so very yeah. Lynchian. Um, uh, the thing is, is high energy. Uh, the next day, my leg hurt really bad, and I limped it off. And then the following day, my leg hurt just as bad, but it was also swollen. So I ended up going to the emergency room, and yeah, I have a blood clot in my right leg that was removed. So I was in the hospital for five days, and that was fun. And I got discharged, but uh, but now, yeah, it, it is no longer Cotton Eye Joe. It's now Clotten Eye Joe. That's I, the, I laugh, which, which which is so hard at that. That and was then, a stroke of genius on my part, <laughs> I must say. I and then I told that to my is brother. Is that the worst injury you've ever had? No, I I tore my hamstring uh, swing dancing when I was in high school. God damn it! <laughs> Gotta stop dancing, you know, I mean, Ben. I, I, <laughs> Ben's no, like every I, one I, of those dancer movies. Many... <laughs> Go ahead. No, I feel like there are many to choose from. I just mean like the way you got it. Is it the worst road to an injury? Dancing the Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> I would say it's the best. I I would say it's it, yeah. it's the most consistent. <laughs> so. It's the most consistent yeah. with my personality. <laughs> Clot, <laughs> Clot and I Joe yeah, there, is I, there was I don't something know. poetic about it. Well, honestly, here's the thing though that this may have been something that I would have had to deal with down the road, and the fact that it was provoked by my cancer treatment, and the fact that it was provoked by Cotton Eye Joe, <laughs> and that I ended up having I have emergency <laughs> surgery for it, it may end up being a blessing in disguise. We'll we, we'll see this you know down the road, but I'm having like genetic testing and a bunch of stuff done. And I may be on uh, medication for the rest of my life that I should have already been on that I didn't wow. need to know that I need to to be on so it's uh i'm, I'm actually as, happy, as i'm so happy it happened this way as i remember it we're sitting around the dinner table and and, and the girls are, are dancing and you were pretty content at, at the head of the table just sitting back <laughs> until cotton eye joe came on you lit up like a goddamn christmas tree and you and you so, and yeah, both nick and nick that. and i got up to you and you're like no I'm going to show you. I am the one. I I, I am the one who Cotton Eye Joe's I, in this I, house. I am. I am Cotton Eye Joe. 
<laughs> provoked Look by cotton I, I am cotton I Joe now provoked by cotton I Joe me. is one of the funniest sentences that has ever been <laughs> like phrases ever to be uttered on this show it sounds so malicious and the thing is is all of that sounds so dumb but that's exactly what happened well I'm gonna just I'm gonna let you know every time I get a flash of Ben's leg uh you guys can't see it at, at home but you if you hear this if you hear uh if you hear a, a, that just know that, know that that's Ben showing off a little leg, and, and we're quite enjoying it. Now, I, Nick, I have a lot of leg. You are recently returned from the 2022 San Diego Comic Con. What can you tell yeah. us about this amazing event that you were at? Well, the the, the first thing I want to say is I, I think I actually am a superhero because I uh, I went to Florida and Chicago and then Comic Con and didn't get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, of, didn't you catch COVID kind of like incredible. a month and a half ago? Yeah, I think that's how he got uh, his superpowers. Uh, uh, okay, okay. The defenses are up. And that, that's why I, I kind of feel like uh, the the rumors are greatly exaggerated that say that you're, you'll just get reinfected. I, I think I think you get a little bit of immunity. I think I'm I think I'm proof of it. But anyway, uh, yeah, Comic Con was was fun. It's my first one in like probably eight years, seven years, something like that. I went to a couple back to back when I first moved to LA and back then it was, you know, kind of unrecognizable to what it is now. It's fucking huge. And yeah. this, this felt like an off year. Like you could definitely feel uh, not as big of a crowd because of COVID concerns. Um, but it was still bumping, you know, and it was like another one of those, like, Oh, we're right. We're, we're reacclimating moments. You know, it hits you. Were there any um, uh, highlights for you? you? Know, yeah, and I said I didn't do any panels or anything. So my days would basically be wandering around the floor, like looking at items and meeting artists and stuff, well, and then coming back home to the hotel room and watching all the trailers, like right after I got home. <laughs> all right, everybody, who are you dressed as? There we go. Yeah, let's. Well, uh, I I went as Bucky. I went uh, as, of course, the Winter Soldier, more of the Summer Soldier, and uh, because it was a delightful seventy-five degrees in San Diego. Uh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't even that bad. It was like the perfect year for for people who wanted to dress I, up because I, I, it was like no one was dying of heat stroke. You know? I, I must good, say that your thing. your current haircut definitely complemented that outfit. It did. No, yeah, thank you. Now, I wanted to I wanted to get that that Bucky costume out of the way before I ended up cutting it. Now, what was your uh, cutting it? Uh, what was your uh, what was your uh, other costume? Your angling. We need to. Angling. Yes, I would I like see. to hear uh, what oh, the other costume. Was I see what for this our is. listeners that aren't on them. your Instagram um, and whatnot. Of course, of course. Um, well, I, I I have not posted anything on my on my Instagram. Well, I, on, I, mics, have, on mics. <laughs> I may, <laughs> right, I, may, I may have I may have some plans. Ah. Some things that, that maybe you didn't see. Maybe you didn't see on Mike's Instagram. I don't know. I've uh, seen but... 137 photos of you <laughs> on Mike's Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And the best way of the best way of keeping in touch with me is following Mike on, <laughs> on Instagram. I've seen much it's, more uh, uh through him. Uh, I told sure. my mom, yeah, like you need to get a hold of me, I'm picking up my phone, just go to Mike's Instagram. You'll probably <laughs> know where I am within like 30 minutes or so. Uh but uh, yeah, I I fulfilled a lifelong dream. And I attended the San Diego Comic Con as myself, as myself in the Marvel Universe six one six Marvel continuity. So we and we Bye. have not we have not discussed this on air because uh, this happened oh, when we, we were during our, our dark. We have spot. not. So so Nick Nick's going to unveil an exclusive Nick, here oh, on the dang. new way. Nick is a mem- is actually <clears throat> in Marvel canon. Yes, at this point, he is part of the not 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 Nick, like not necessarily Nick Santa Croce, but Nick plays a character who exists in the MCU. Yeah, and we're not and, fucking and with I you. Wanna, this is I want to thank man. I want to thank all my I want to thank all my fans, the, the Nick Army, who really <laughs> lobbied with the uh, make Nick Cannon hashtag. I, I must have gotten the Kevin Feige. I, re- I really want to appreciate those efforts. But I was in, I'm in the trailer for She-Hulk. I am, I am one of the <laughs> profiles that Jen swipes right on. So not, not only am I canon, he is canon dateable. That, that She-Hulk, She-Hulk swipes right on me. 
Yeah. You, you are yeah. she fuckable. And, and who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe I was able to work, you know, into a polyamorous relationship with Matt Murdock as well in that universe <laughs> or in another multiverse. <laughs> the, 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 the possibilities. My are polyamorous friend. <laughs> Now, Listen. now, Nick, um, your character in the MCU, um, I believe, sh- does not share the same profession as you. What What is the profession of your uh, MCU no, character? The, on the, on on the the matcher profile page, the uh, the Tinder of the MCU, um, I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ, and I live 16 miles away. So, for those who haven't from followed Fuji. along to this point, watch the She Hulk trailer. If yes. you watch the end. Then there's a point where She Hulk is is swiping Wait, right with a, with a bunch of of people, and one of those profiles is Nick. It's a photo of Nick with and a label that a his name is is Nick, Nick, who is a DJ. Who's a DJ? And I'm shirtless. Oh, you are. You are. <laughs> I'm shirtless. Yeah, and uh, you know that that used to be a photo in circulation, so you you might recognize it. If you live in the Los Angeles area. Oh, no. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. That would have made of me so sad. <laughs> no, no. No, but, like, you know, but a, a very good friend works on it and, and pulls some strings. And, like, you know, it's 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 so fun. It's so it's so stupid and fun uh, for that to be, like, a claim, for, claim to fame. I'm, I'm very stoked about it. I also and, think the uh, the new She Hulk yeah, trailer canon, looks. You know, uh, can't take that away from me, baby. New new She Hulk trailer also looks great. Uh, it's and fucking I, awesome. I, I yeah. laughed. I laughed super hard at the at the very Fleabag esque uh, look to camera, and then the Hulk <laughs> look to camera, and then back to her looking at the camera. Like uh, acknowledgement of it made me laugh really hard. Well, you you know Matt, you know Matt that She Hulk has been breaking the fourth wall well before Fleabag or Deadpool in <laughs> John Burns. Iconic runs. This is true. This is very true. Um, then, and I see that, that, that along along with another big reveal at the end of that second uh, She Hulk trailer. Yes, they also uh, they acknowledge that fourth wall breaking is going to be part of the show, which was like a, a hotly contested. You know, for a hot minute, that was a a debate on the forums whether she's going to do that or not. Since Deadpool already kind of beat her to the punch and was coming to the Disney MCU. But it looks like they're they're leaning into it like really hard, which I th- think is the way to go. And I'm curious about how they're going to explain it. I-, I hope they don't. I hope that the first shot of the first episode is her addressing the audience and then just, you know, never, never acknowledging it again. It just is a thing that happens. It's also this. Um, I, that's kind of what I'm hoping this for. This gatekeeping nonsense of like people have been breaking the fourth wall. Uh, th- there's a reason it's a phrase that exists because it's happened uh, countless times yeah, it before. So, much. so it's like it, you can't you didn't invent it. So like it's just a different it's a it's a gimmick that you can use like any other gimmick that's done across the board. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see how it does, because, you know, the the, the CG is just completely getting getting crucified online and it's it's also you know it's a female-led show you you see type of backlash with Ms. marvel and and you kind of wonder how it's going to play um but i i I think that from the couple trailers that we've seen you know bias aside it looks like a lot of fun and it looks like the tone is there and that was always going to be the most important thing it was never the cg was never going to be more important been setting the right tone, and if the trailers are an indication, I think that you know, who knows? They might have a, a home run. I'm on board. Well, I, mean, I, I I know somebody who, who <laughs> I'm available on. for season two if, if you want to flesh out my character. Who for Kevin, a, for, for listening a, for a, a, a one portion was on the writing staff, and they were like the way they were approaching it is they want to approach it like boss and legal. Basically, they want to make it like a legal procedural that where. We don't want to have to bring like credence to the fact that you have a, a mutant. You have somebody who's like a, that. That's your main character. I've been hearing a lot of that and, and a so, lot of Ally McBeal too. Yeah, exactly. And that that we're basically trying to like establish the fact that they're like, okay, She Hulk is She Hulk, but then it's just a legal procedural. And I think that's no one a, attacked a, a the really... CG of the baby in Alec McBeal. No one was complaining <laughs> about the baby CGI. I, I, I did. I, 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 did. I, I think well, that's a that's a novel approach, honestly, because it's it's unique. Yeah. I'm super excited. Well, um, it, it, they haven't gotten into you know some of my favorite Daredevil storylines was him defending superheroes, and they they didn't broach that 
in Netflix. And I think it's smart. They're kind of giving that more to, to Jen. And that that makes Matt Murdock's profile as a lawyer they, flexible. They, they, they could give him more serious cases, depending on where they want to go with him. Um, one of my, there's another really good, well, not good, it's problematic now, but Harry Styles plays uh, Star Fox, which mm-hmm. is the reveal at the end of Eternals. And Star Fox in the comics is real problematic in a lot of ways that the Purple Man was. Um, his power is the kind of did he do a know, barrel roll? Bewitch people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Knew it was coming. Yeah, do a barrel, Knew barrel it barrel was roll. coming. I, I should have seen that coming, but it didn't. Um, anyway, he can get in your mind and convince you to do things, and you know he ends up you know committing sexual assault. You know, and uh, She Hulk actually defends him in court. Until she realizes that he used his powers on her, to which she just like beats the shit out of him. Um, I like that. Yeah, nice. that would be interesting. You know, I'll I'll take scenes we will never end up seeing in the MCU for five hundred. Um, there, we'll see. There's yeah. a, a, a one thing before I, I want to get to. I have a I have a game for us today, and then I also want to get to uh, um, our topic. But I do have I have one really quick weird recommendation for the audience out there. I don't even know if this is a recommendation for some of you. I don't know that this is for everyone, but Nick and I watched one of the strangest pilots um, (laughs) of like a thing that I'm, I can't believe exists. And I'm very curious of how and like how it came together. But um, uh, Nathan Fielder, who's a comedian uh, that did a show called Nathan for you, where basically he would kind of, involve himself in causes or businesses or people's lives in very awkward, strange ways, has a new show on HBO called The Rehearsal. And the premise of The Rehearsal is that he's basically putting out kind of ads and and question things out on like Reddit and Craigslist and stuff of saying like, hey, do you have a secret that um, you've never told anyone that you want to tell someone? And then they, they find these people. And so the first episode is a guy that is, um, he's on a trivia team. Everyone on the trivia team has master's degrees. He has lied since they started doing trivia like 10 years ago that he has a master's degree, but now he wants to come clean. But he's a very, also a very awkward guy. And the, the premise is that Nathan's going to to teach him how to do this by rehearsing it. But the way they do it is like Charlie Kaufman, Synecdoche, New York <laughs> style, where they rebuild like his house and they rebuild the bar like an exact replica and hire oh, actors no. to play all the people. And they run through scenarios like 10, 20, 30 times of like running through the conversations. It is, it is so like delightfully bizarre and i just i'm like i can't this fact that h someone at hbo was was like uh, you know open enough to this be like yeah we're gonna put like when i say they recreate this bar they recreate to like excruciating detail on a sound stage the exact bar that he goes to for trivia each week and they recreate his house like to scale. It's, it's like the production design on this is, is staggeringly crazy for, for what you're getting out of it, which is like a lot of very awkward conversations between people. Um, But if you are looking for something like way off the reservation to watch that I, I, I have to say you're going to find something to enjoy about it. Uh, The rehearsal is just bizarre fun for, for me. Nice. Um, so let's play. I got. I have two games, but I'm gonna just pick one of these games here. Would you like to play a game? Um, so this is a game. Uh, as I was saying to Ben, that I uh, someone Isn't that jigsaw. <laughs> yeah. Well, or war games. Uh, I think uh, that, either. Yeah, one. That, oh, got it. Got that, it got that, got that's it. what I was doing. So um, this game basically is to war take games. a movie title, and I'm gonna give you the opposite of an actual movie title, and you have to guess what the real title is. For example, if I said "Live Easy," Die Hard, Die Hard, that would be Die Hard. Um, if I said "Ugly and Black," <laughs> Black Beauty, no, Ugly and Black, Ugly. the opposite. So white, Pr- pretty and pink. There it is, pretty and pink. That's correct. How much black? The opposite of pink. Yeah. It's yeah, listen. Not all of these it's are going not to be exact winners. Science. You know what? Let's not pick apart the individual ones on this here. Let's sucks. enjoy the game. How about the night before yesterday, the day before tomorrow, the day what? after tomorrow, after, after tomorrow? Yes. 
I saw, uh, I saw that two times in theater. <clears throat> oh my god! <laughs> How about uh, the night Mars moved a lot? The day uh, the Earth stood still. Very good. How about uh, forward to the past? Pretty back, back to the future. future. Yeah. Uh, big Mister Rain. Are we? Are we just? Is this Little Miss? Su- Little Miss playing? Sunshine. Yeah. This just, just shout out answers. It's Little Miss Sunshine. Ben, ben uh, got oh, we're that playing. One. We're playing. Yeah, right we're now? Play. Well, this is. Yeah, we're just. There's I, no. I, I, I was just taking every I other one off miss, and just giving it to you. <laughs> yeah, you got. You got to be right. quick. How about the dropout? The graduate. There it is. <laughs> uh, which we. Which yet? Which yet? That's right. That means I've been showing some. Like, I think I think I I think I've been Johnny on the spot, and I would have gotten a little more. <laughs> this one, this one play. might be a little too soon. <laughs> there will be clotting. Oh, no, there will be blood. <laughs> That's correct. There will be blood. <laughs> no what? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck, man? Come on, there will be clotting. There is wa- the opposite there, there, of there will be blood. There is. won't be clotting. <laughs> <laughs> How about there won't um? Be clotting. Let's do a, a some. Uh, tr- how about creation later? Mm, this is a tricky one. Oh, apocalypse now. That's yeah, correct. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, how about many states for young women? <laughs> many states for no, young. No women. No country for old men. That's correct. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Oh my god! The non-fighting adult. <laughs> No, nobody. The non-fighting adult. Uh, at this Frisco point, my, my my brain's shutting down. The Karate Kid. <laughs> oh yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about um, a lot of bad women? A few good men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about save William? Bill. Bill. That's correct. Uh, let's do one more. How about oh, this one's pretty tough. The absence of combined blue and red. The color purple. That is correct. Oh well done, wow. Nick. Yeah, very, very well done, I, Nick. I would not have gotten that one. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, well done. I don't have the claps on here because I, I replaced it with boner you, alert. You don't have the clap? I don't have the clap. <laughs> Just do you boner can, alert. You can, all cla- you can all clap for me. Boner clap for alert. Me. <laughs> That's right. There we go. <laughs> Get a boner alert. So, uh, on to our topic of the show for us today. Um, we were kind of. I was surprised we have not done this before. We have. We have sort of been adjacent to yeah, this topic. We've on danced around episodes. the topic before. Um, but we have never done an episode entirely on family films. And as usual, we, we kind of approach this separately, and we will probably have some different kind of discussions and rules. I know from my side because we've we've done a lot of animation episodes. We, we've done animated things. We've done a, a whole Disney episode. Disney episode, yeah. Um, so I, I I think I think the question is between not whether it's animated or not, but whether it's like a kids movie or a family. Movie. Well, well, we're going to discuss like, that. Yes. That's the distinction. I think so. And I that's just, the distinction. I, that I I, made. In full disclosure, I did not pick any animated films to discuss uh, on no, my list. Neither did um, I. And I don't think that there's a problem with discussing animated movies um, Good, because I did. Uh, yeah, well, 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 go ahead. Uh, Matt, do you have the soundbite that the I sent cat. you? Uh, I loaded? do, yes. Yeah, that's b- b- so, 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 so the first thing I did was I, I asked my, my daughters, uh, who are eight, almost nine, they'll be nine in about a week, uh, what they thought family films meant. And so I think that we should listen to that first as a, as a litmus test. This could, this could set the trend. So here you go. This is uh, Luna and Margot. So if it's a family movie, what would make it constituted as a family movie? Comedy. There has to be comedy? Yeah. There has to be comedy. What kind of comedy? Good comedy. Good comedy? No, it also has to be peachy. Because PG-13 <laughs> is above 13, and that is in a family movie because um, some yeah. families have kids in it. Well, some of the Harry Potter movies are PG-13. I don't care. I love it anyway. <laughs> okay, so those are just not family movies. That you... Okay, the thing is that the first three Harry Potter movies, they're family movies because they're all in the kids section, and then once you go to the fourth and above, um, they're in the adult section. 
Okay, so three Harry Potter movies are family movies, and the rest aren't. Um, um, what are other family movies that you like? Like, well, not, I don't really like these ones that I'm about to say, but <laughs> they all family movies, like Disney princess movies, like Ariel, Rapunzel. Um, Disney movies, yeah. okay. Yeah, those are family movies. What are other types of family movies? Like, do you think something like We Could Be Heroes is a family movie? Yeah, We Could Be Heroes is a good family movie. But when you watch it 13 times, it kind of gets annoying to your parents. <laughs> of hearing the same song over and over again. We can be here, bro. Okay. Oh, I think anything you watch 13 times can get annoying for parents. Um, what, any other really, anything? any other insights as far as family movies are concerned? Um, it's 15 I don't times. know. I don't really watch a lot of family movies. What do you watch? R-rated movies? No. <laughs> All I watch is like Harry Potter on TV shows. What, I don't even watch that rated movie. What, what, what's your What's your favorite uh, family movie? That's hard. <laughs> Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter. I think my favorite family movie is Zathura, but I'm not sure. I like uh. Harry Potter too. <laughs> And Hermione Granger and Ron and Draco and everybody in Harry Potter. Okay, so what we've established is the first three Harry like Potters are. <laughs> <laughs> what? Margo, do you like Dolores Umbridge? You said you like everyone. Okay, never mind. This is just turning into a Harry Potter conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay with that. Uh, so some good mm-hmm. points there. Uh, I like the comedy angle. Um, so there has to be comedy. And uh, I think we might find that to be It has to be true. PG. Apparently, the PG so one. How, is... how are the duck? How are the duck can be a family movie? This is true, and so can Back to the Future, which was listed yeah. on it... some sites I saw as a family movie. So I, I know there's going to be some controversial well, ones. We on lived. There. See, we lived through a weird time. It was it was like a dead zone. It was like a two or three year zone. Someone should do some research into this. But it's where you could. You could rate certain things PG, and then years later, they're like, MPAA was like, nah, 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 nah. You can't do that anymore. That's a PG-13. Yeah, like so uh, while, Ghostbusters was PG. Yeah. Well, it didn't, exi- yeah, so it didn't exist while, before Red Dawn in, in Temple of Doom. Um, like, Temple of Doom yeah. is what made, like caused there to be the rating, and then Red Dawn was the first movie to get the PG-13 rating. But I, So there's an interesting thing, like, kind of like uh, looking at the time frame of, as you look at, at family movies, through the years, because um, you have a lot of things that are happening in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, which largely happen to be mostly musicals. There, there were a lot of like very things that were geared towards like the whole family. Uh, you go, go ahead, Ben. No, I, I, I was I was just about to I was straightening up just because I, I'm not. I think that we should explain what family movies are to all of us. Uh, like, okay, because for me, a family film was a what is a movie that's. Um, clearly predicated upon the the idea that you can show it to the entire family, including like a two year old or a four year old or a seven year old or like whatever, and and that you would not feel guilty about you know uh, about showing that movie. But the thing is, is the the reason why I'm bringing that up is because obviously everybody's families are completely different. You were watching graded R movies before you sure. were born. Matt and <laughs> and Nick, you weren't allowed to watch radar movies until you were in college. So, <laughs> well, I, I think there's, I, I think you're right because I, I think there's another element to it that's really important when you when you do say whole family. I think the other side of that is that you know there are, there are kids movies and there are family movies. Exactly. There are movies that exactly. kids are going to love that parents are going to be like, oh, fucking just like kill me. I can't, I can't deal with this. And then there are movies that everybody in the family is going to like line up for. Uh, and, uh, and maybe, yeah, uh, sure, there are going to be opinions that are going to differ about the enjoyment. So, so, so let me throw out a litmus test right, yeah. right now. E.T., family movie. Family movie. Family movie, right? He, he says penis breath, but I'm going to let it slide. It's a family movie. Do you agree it's a family movie, Nick? E.T.? Well, o- only once they replace the guns with walkie-talkies. <laughs> <laughs> well then it is because that's then, how it is yes, now <laughs> yes it's, then yes it's a family film yeah so, so, <laughs> so, watch somebody die inside so, subreddit so, would love it to that. so I, I, I think that you know there are 
it, it really is interesting because of, of like what the intent is from the filmmaker. Like obviously you're trying to make a, a if you're trying to make something that's accessible to the entire family, um, versus what we were talking about, like with kids movies, like where where it's actually actively marketed and actively made for kids. Because for example, like their their animated films like Tangled like e cigarettes. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but I was gonna say their animated films like Tangled that I think are that work really well as a family movie that they're that have adult jokes because that's the thing. It may be marketed to kids, it may be uh, constructed for kids, but they have adult jokes in there. Or for example, I'll I'll do something more recent: Mitchell's versus the Machines. That's a great family film. Agreed. It's an animated. Say, it's an animated film that's still marketed towards kids. Is it a family film or is it but, but, a, a, a but, kids but it's, film? But it's also. But it's also also about a family. On of top course. Of I, I everything else. I think there's a there's a quality factor at play as well. So that so yeah, naturally. So, so let's. So there are there are bad movies made for kids that still have like nuggets for the adults, but they're just like fucking so minor that's, throwaway. So that's minions. Yeah. Air Bud that, 3 that, fucking that's basically sucks. The juggernaut. Well, the, the juggernaut right now is the minions films. The, 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 I don't see a future where they're, they don't make I like, big money. But I like the and, minions. <laughs> right. right but, but, but yes, but objectively, if you watch it now, at, at this point in the franchise, suck. They kind of suck, but but you're right, Matt. That's the thing. That is the the, the mainstream. Parents don't mind taking their kids to it, and that's why it's a, a behemoth because parents are taking their kids to go see those movies. So, then there's like the Encantos that have a a, a lot a, a big reach, but it's still definitely more mature, definitely a better film, and definitely a step up from the sort of cookie cutter Minions movies. And yeah. they both kind of popped around the same time and i think they're both like good examples of like of like sort of like what is going to cut through you know and on one side is kind of a bit more hollywood and on the other side it's like a bit more thoughtful now and the more hollywood one is more of what you get <laughs> are you insinuating that the writers behind the minions movies aren't thoughtful yes i guess you don't like french well, people nick no i'm not even saying that i'm not even saying that I don't, it, it, they're not good they're not good. Um, they, 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 got, they got enough going on. They got enough fun gags, but that's just it. They got enough. that, And like you said, Matt, before, there are some movies that are just like, you know, I, I put squarely in the kids' movie category because it's like pop the, like, pop the Blu-ray like in blank and leave the check. room. Oh, blank check is a Listen, great movie. How dare you? How dare you, you <laughs> how first dare of you. all? Right, I, so I have it, a was a gr- it was a great movie for me when I was 10. <laughs> so I have a question. Well, and I think that's that's kind it's of what we're getting It's all about to. wish fulfillment. Exactly. And that's that's why it's... it's it, That's a movie your parents are not going to enjoy watching it, it's, that movie. But, it's basically but, big without turning into Tom Hanks. Yeah, but... Well, no, here's a better... So big... I'm big fucking I think, that girl. I think oh, no, what's big, better? Big is, a, uh, big is a, a good family movie. I think vice versa is a shitty family movie. I think they're both family movies with the same plot. One is executed sex, better. You think sex is good? But wait, wait, but you, but you think Tom Hanks had sex in that film? You I think do. Sex belongs in a family film. I think you can have. You think sex? I think you have babies in family. You, you, films. you can have sex in a family. I think you can film. have sex in a family film. In a family film. We're not Quakers, Even. Nick. Um, now I have a question for you guys. If you're in a family. You know what your parents are doing. I have a, I have a, yeah, we all came from something. Uh, so I have a question for you. Family movie or not, Goonies. Family movie. I don't think. I don't agree. I think that is a kids wow. movie. I think my parent, my mom hate my mom and dad a hated kids. that movie. It's a kids movie with adult appeal. I get. I I, I will say <laughs> eight, it's eight, written like an adults movie. The, I mean, the, like the, eight, eight, the, eight. The, the kid the the families I knew in the eighties, none of the parents wanted to watch. I'll tell you the movies. There are seven watch. curse words during the fucking credit sequence i mean but like, it's like it's it, but, it's a, car- but it's, it's a cartoon but it's a cartoon of like i think we have we have we, there's no way we can get proper perspective on it but i i can tell you at least in my house when it it first came out that was not a movie that like my parents wanted anything to do with like they could care I, less about no, a bunch I, of kids I, I, like i understand going that in a perspective cave and I, putting themselves I, in danger I, I agree with that because my none of I, and I, and i understand that because none of my parents had wanted that anything to do with that movie or like monster squad or any of those other movies that that came out in, in that period 
However, like, for example, Monster Squad is a PG-13 movie that came out in 1987. Yeah. Um, it may have been designed for kids, but it's a family movie. It has to be a family movie just because it's it's so adult and it's almost orientation, if, if that makes sense. D- does that make sense? It's, like, uh, I, I think we're going to have a lot of gray areas on, on this. I, and I think it, it, this was, was funny, if, uh, especially in the 80s, right? I think the 80s is really the 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 hardest. That, that, that's when everybody was testing like what they could do. Like, so if you look at kind of, if you're in this evolution where we're coming from like a lot of very, very kid-centric things from like back in the day and a lot of musical stuff. Uh, go ahead. L- 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 let me throw one out there for you guys that I think you'll enjoy. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Is that a family movie? Yes. Yeah. Why? Um, I will say that it is, I think, A, it, it follows the area that as a kid watching that movie, I'm watching a bunch of slapstick cartoons and I don't really understand anything that is that is adult themed is going over my head versus my parents can be watching that movie and they're watching a Bob Hoskins, like who's a a a Shakespearean British trained actor that's do, giving a fucking crazy good performance in it, and they're having all of these adult moments that are layered on. It's got all the nostalgia from from kind of old time stuff. You've got Betty Boop in there. I think it's a it's a it's a textbook family movie for me. I, I will I will I will say this: when that movie first came out, my parents were going to come take me to the theater, and I was too scared to go. We had plans. We had tickets. You thought you were going. You I'm thought just, you were going to end up I, in the dip. I I was too scared to go. Uh, but it it is it's a kids movie. It, it's a family movie that has adult themes. But like what the big sticking point for me, and I think like most kids, it was it wasn't about the the sex jokes or or all the stuff that went flying over their heads. It was about Eddie Valiant's arc and him going from this closed-minded hurt bitter person to opening his heart yeah you know and um that's a staple of a a, a family film a a character kind of really overcoming something and becoming a better person i I, I really feel like i could argue that that who framed roger rabbit is absolutely like the farthest thing from a family (laughs) film of all time it just happens to have animated characters. Are you trying to tell me, Ben, that a movie about a murder is not meant for children? Because I f- believe there was no nudity in that movie, so it's okay. We can show killing. We just cannot show titties. Listen, I love Robert it's, Zemeckis, it's, so it doesn't but matter. they played patty cake. I mean, th- that is the most, still the most genius <laughs> censor. I, I like he played patty cake, and I have the photos. <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah. that is. Good I joke. think that's a also a. That's I think, a family and, and film. And that's ju- just like a fucking rabbit. Gee, oh, the, God the damn it. tone. The tone. I of... still have sexual dysfunction because of <laughs> Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> the tone. Yeah, God the damn tone it. of the of the patty cake reveal, I think, is what absolutely cements it as a family movie. I, I, and that as it's, it's flipping the, faster and faster. The, yeah, the parents are expecting this thing to happen. The kids are not even sure what they're expecting. We get a patty Dan cake Aykroyd joke out of bl- it. Dan Aykroyd got a blowjob from a ghost, Ben. That was a PG film. And, I, and uh, so, like, I mean, I think there I are, don't think the Ghostbuster, Ghostbusters is not a family film. Oh, no, it is not a family film at all. It's a horror movie. It's, come it, on. It's, it's, a horror, it's a horror action it, movie. It now, was a comedy. It was rated PG. It fits all the criteria. What about, uh, really what about uh, the Star Wars family movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. So... So here, I'm glad you said that, Matt. I say absolutely yes, but it's only because of a recent evolution of nerds becoming <laughs> parents. And I, I'm dead serious. Like, coming from Comic-Con, there is a 500% increase in kids coming with their parents since I started going. Um, that is something that, like, I think for a long time, generations of parents were afraid to involve their kids because they love it get so much. fucking picked on. And now, like, uh, the big deal for the, the parents that I know is the day they get to show their kids Star Wars. You know, it's like, it's like kind of becoming the ultimate family film among it's my a, friends. It's certainly a kids. family like, franchise. So imagine showing your kids it's about all a three of the it's Star Wars movies and them being like, eh, they kind of suck. <laughs> and then they watch one episode of The Mandalorian and they're just like, baby Yoda. 
<laughs> well, I, I think so. You know what I, I think is very, very it's funny. It's about a brother and a sister and a father and well, an adopted father. I, and... <laughs> Deadbeat dad. No, I, I think, um, Ben, you, you hit the what, what is really interesting about the Star Wars universe and franchise and where it was and what it became is that I think the first Star Wars movie, it's a it's a tough it's a tough pill to swallow to say it is a family film. I think by Jedi, we have turned into a family yeah, franchise sure. and he, and almost even sense. overcorrected to the point of making it, as some people say, too much about the kids and too much catered toward children. And that's also where, you know, the, those of us here on the podcast right now, you know, I, I saw, you know, I saw Empire and Star Wars on VHS um, and then I saw Jedi in the theater. It was the only one I saw in the theater. But Jedi was like the most, uh, I was the most tuned into that. It was the one that I saw beginning to end. Oh, like, good for exactly. you. Exactly. So it's like, mm-hmm. I think that that's an interesting one versus something if we look at like a, a Christmas story. I think story. the Marvel movies will be, now, now the, you just hit probably right. what is my family's absolute number one most watched film as a family. And that's Christmas story. And I think also another thing I wanted to point out, along uh, along with like the Star Wars, my, I think Avengers is going to end up being like the next generation of family films. Well, it, it's going to be um, the next Star Wars. Basically, it's it's not yeah. it's not designed as a family film, but it's going to it's going to turn into a family film but, just because you watch it with your family. Yeah, yeah, but like but Star Wars is is literally about a family, and the Avengers is about a family of of sorts as well. So those themes are built in to the crust you know what i mean sure but um to get back to christmas story right like i i I have probably seen that film with my parents probably you know upwards to 27 times you know every christmas Um, yeah every christmas so all you're saying is you're 27 years old nick (laughs) (laughs) oh i didn't watch it every year but like oh i've I've watched it every year since i was like four Five and and when we were when we were coming up with our own like personal definitions of what is is a family movie, I just started thinking about the movies that literally I remember watching more than twice with every member of my family present. Well, I'm glad and you that picked a good became... Christian movie, Nick. Um, I expected nothing well, less of you. Uh, the Passion well, of the Christ to, to do it about here's God. The thing. Here, here's the here's the thing. Like Christmas stories innately, I, I, and to be fair, I also have an amazing memory of seeing Bad Santa in the Tallahassee Mall with every member of my family as well. But that also goes to my point that like Christmas films, like innately, innately check off that box, like immediately. I think every Christmas film that's ever been made is a family movie, especially Black Christmas. <laughs> well, I, yes. So, it, so and, it, and slow live. So it, and it, slow live, it is of interesting because I, I was thinking about you know the Christmas films. Wait, uh, dot, wait, live, live slow, right? Never mind. Uh, yeah, I, I live easy. Uh, I think or die uh, hard. Live easy, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Live that's easy. right. Live easy. Yeah. Uh, um, so El, Elf, I think, is a great example of a of a family uh, a family film for sure. But it, what's funny? John Favreau's Lion King. And one bet, and so and so. Well, it's funny. I I also I did not include any live action remakes of animated movies either uh, on here, even though those do mm. count sort of ish. But Nick, Nick for, what, did, what did you pour yourself a a, a nice uh, pour of? Ooh, yeah, there was some. Uh, some I'm, uh, I'm 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 glad you I'm glad you asked Ben because this episode of Family Film of the New Way Podcast <laughs> is brought to you by High West Whiskey, Old Grand oh, High West American Cherry Bourbon. Nice oh, High West. Yeah. Um, the Park Park City, Utah. I can uh, fuck with that. And I, I highly recommend. So where I, recommend. where I realized I was having, where I was struggling with this uh, this assignment. So once struggling. I got in, once I got into the '90s, I had a very clear set of movies that I think like a hundred percent hit. So, oh, hit so the, for, but, but hold, for Air Bud, hold on, hold on, Air Bud. Uh, hold for, on a sec, hold on. I was just almost done. Um, what do you mean, hold on. I got Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> to be a, to be a family movie, it can't be animated or be a no. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't action. say it can't. I'm just saying I didn't. I didn't put them on the list just because we've discussed. We've gone through a lot of those things before. I just wanted to see some other stuff. But there. Okay. But but Ben All brought right. up a, a good point of like obviously my household was very different growing up. So for me, the vacation movies, which are not family films by a lot of standards including that they are r-rated uh and contain nudity but those the 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 
vacation movies were family movies around my household. Like we yeah. watched vacation, European vacation, and Christmas vacation constantly. Yeah, that that was kind of the conversation I had with Beth. Is she was just like, well, you know, like death becomes her. I'm I'm like, that's not a family movie. <laughs> like it's not designed for kids. It's not designed for families. But because you watch it with your family, you associate it with your family. And uh, e- easily, oh, I'm sorry. And, and and she was like, what about speed? I, I I'm not I'm not joking. That literally happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jan de Bont speed. Don't think so. Now, however, Twister family movie. Well, so th- that's the thing, though. Uh, like, gonna... like it, 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 is it is it a family movie? Because I, by the way, I here I'm gonna go on a complete uh, uh, aside here. So. The girls and I recently, especially uh, Beth has, wasn't feeling well for the past few days, so we've been trying to just watch random stuff, and I've been trying to show them, uh, you know, like fun TV shows and and uh, and movies and stuff like that. I said, "Hey, do you want to watch your first rated R movie?" Uh, they're they're almost at that age that I saw my first rated R movie. I think the first rated R movie that they should see is The Matrix because there's no sex, there's no uh, there's very little bad language. It is extremely violent, but they understand. <laughs> they, they they play they play Roblox. They understand that there's a world within a world, and so as long as I go into it and I just say, "Hey, um, is it okay? You know, it, it, do you understand that this is all fake and everything is going into it?" Is it okay? So, but basically, I'm just trying to make the Matrix a family movie here. So, so let's uh, let's let's discuss that. There's no nudity or bad R-rated words. Film there was... is a scene where people are gunned down on mass, just like just decimated with. If the Matrix came out today, guns. it would be rated PG-13. I see. I see worse stuff on the news, Matt. I, My I, first R-rated movie was Time Cop. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I think Time Cop was the first movie I I stole. Like I think Doctor Rick and I wow. went from that from another movie and and went into Time Cop in the theater and and did a double feature. The but. scene the scene where like the scene where he's fighting those guys in the apartment and he spills all the water on the ground and then like throws the, the the live wire into it and does the split on the countertop and like balances himself it's like contractually fucking... obligated i mean john god <laughs> van damme has so to do good. a split in the movie he, yeah <laughs> it's so good it also so is good. A, it also has a jarring uh jump cut to a nude woman <laughs> that happens like from a completely unrelated scene and literally the next shot wow. you have is a Butt ass naked woman on a bed I, beckoning I need, a man to come closer to her. I need to watch Time Cop. Again. Now that's what I call safe sex. <laughs> <laughs> it, the reveal the reveal was some guy was watching virtual reality porn. Well, so, and the next so, shot was him like in the helmet. Well, Dem- uh, Demolition well, Man family movie. T- 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 <laughs> family <laughs> movie. I know this is going to devolve. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Honestly, he, he, here, here's the crazy thing, though. I think that there are movies that were designed for family audiences, that they, they're, they're 100% designed for families, that I think are way more, um, uh, you know, trigger warning, you know, a- a- okay. ask, uh, you know. Uh, so, for example, The NeverEnding Story. NeverEnding Story was a family movie. It's It, it was designed for families. I think that it was a, a movie that's made for families. I I still am not over it. <laughs> I, 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 I I still cry. I wake up in cold sweat sometime, <laughs> sometimes. Times uh, screaming Artek, but you know. Ben, it, it, ben, <laughs> I, but the absolute best cosplay I saw at Comic Con was oh, a Trey. Oh God! I've pulling seen this. A, pulling a rope. And they had a horse head. It was cut at an angle, so it looked like it was sinking oh my into God. the floor. <laughs> and he would he would pause, get in his knees, like put his arms out. It, it <laughs> is, it is, it is rough. Yeah. That one, it's yeah. amazing. It's so good. I yeah, I think there are. I think especially the eight, like the eighties, really was that time of these conflict. Not conflicted. It's just I, there was a. Yeah. I think the idea was that children are going to understand that there is there there. You know, look at the Spielberg kids movies of the time. All deal with a missing father figure and like there's a lot of uh, angst and, just, and, and listen, ennui. To go to go back to Roger Rabbit, right? It, it, it 
when your question is whether it's a family movie or not, or there's something you can watch with your kids and have a comfortable, like, you know, post movie viewing experience. That movie wrote into into Disney canon and Warner Brothers canon and every every property that was involved in that that cartoons could die. And like, what is a darker like? Yeah. What is a darker no, concept for a kid watching a movie with all their favorite cartoon characters in it? When 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 the judge dropped that shoe into the dip, that and scene and was the eyeballs. My, yeah, yeah, like that. There were scenes in Roger Rabbit that I mean, I think I was right. It turns out I ended up seeing that movie like, oh yeah, that's fucked. Um, and it's of course why one of the many reasons it's an amazing movie looking back on, but. I, I, that is some of the bite that you don't get anymore. Whether whether it be you know guns and ET or, or do you um, Dracula or Dracula grabbing a little girl and calling her a bitch. You know like <laughs> you know duck <laughs> boobies in a PG film. There were things that like they just kind of like they'll be okay. The kids will be duck all right. Titties. You know they'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, it's true. Uh, uh, I do know, think, and we, we don't really have that anymore. I, I no, I, I, I think, mm, let's get, I, let's I'll get, yeah, and I want to, I want to get into, in, into some. I, I think, I mean, I, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't say that I think there's one quintessential family movie from the '80s that is like the most family movie of all time, and I'm going to say it's The Princess Bride. Um, I think it's one that transcends just about everybody's family has watched. The Princess Bride at some point. Have the girls watched That's Princess Bride? Yeah, of course sure. they have. Uh, the, the irony of The Princess Bride is that it shouldn't be a family film. <laughs> but for some reason, and I think actually like Mark Knopfler's score helps yeah. it, 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 is that it, yeah. it almost feels serialized and, and that it feels like a, a TV show. Almost, so it's so it's well, the, kind of. I think it's kind of the, also the idea that you're you're watching an, a grandfather tell yes, this t- tale t- tell to the their tale. story. Exactly, so it's yeah. you're watching a very fantasized, uh, you know, thing yeah. that's happening. Not na- naturally, yeah. Um, so let's let's get kind of into the '90s a little bit, and then I and then I do really want to focus in- on Incredibles. Kind of the t- yeah, I mean, Incredibles is a is a that's and that's two thousand. Three, four, uh, but I in the nineties. I know. I think there were a there was just a run. Airbud of yeah, like you heard a lot of movies like Airbud. I think there are things like um, <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. Houston, we have a dog. Uh, yeah, like Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. Hook, uh, which we can debate. I was, uh, and I also Airbud. Honey, I. I, <laughs> I I like Blew Up the Kid. I think Blew Up the Kid is an underrated sequel. The kid, the kid becomes gi- giant. It's a cash and grab. What Reno. a cash grab! What is just? A, what oh is this? man! <laughs> and like, there, there weren't many. There weren't many characters named Nick in movies back then. I mean, and, the, and the, Nick the fact that it's called up. Honey, they got I got the bl- date Felicity. Honey, I blew up the kid. Yeah, you can't it's call that. So funny. You can't make that movie in 2022. You can't have a movie titled <laughs> "I Blew Up the Kid." Honey, <laughs> honey I blew myself. Sorry, <laughs> Tobias Fionke. Now, um, now, do you feel that a movie like The Witches is too yes. adult? Okay, for you, kids? you're kidding. No, you are no, hitting nice. on like a lot of the points that I had prepared. So, it, um, like between Star Wars becoming a family film to the, the weird, uh, the at times disturbing Raw Doll adaptations, I I, I put Willy, all of them. I put Willy Wonka in there for sure. Is that was a, Matilda a constant movie? And and like when you look at the old Willy Wonka, that's not for me personally in my guidelines. When it comes to like the most members of my family. I literally sat down to watch that movie more than once with grandparents and yeah. uncles and aunts. Like that was a movie I watched many times with extended family and not many movies can like can claim that. But like I was obsessed with Roald Dahl I was a weird kid. Yeah. And my sister was a kind of a weird kid and my mom taught third grade and loved Roald Dahl. So like all those movies were big uh, in my family. So I, I, I will argue that I think that, that uh, family movies changed. With one movie, Shh. ooh, which is Home Alone. Ah, I, 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 yes. I, I, I think that we had the '80s where everything was kind of subcompartmentalized. You guys are in my head this episode. And then, and then Home Alone comes out, and then all of a sudden, it's like we have movies that are for kids, and we have family movies that are a little bit more elevated after that. Um, I, I, I really feel like, like. It, the '90s were a time where everything was kind of more subcompartmentalized into those bigger categories, where it was like 
you know, it, it, it wasn't so much like you were either making a kids movie or you're making a family movie or something that was going to be, a, you know, more adaptable or more uh, accessible to the entire family. And, and Home Alone. And I, I don't know how much you guys re- remember of this time. Like, I remember very, very I remember I, it very I was, acutely. Uh, I, it was one of those movies that I, I came to late because my mom was like, no. Like my my parents were like, no, you're not going to watch this. Like this kid, like you can't. You came says, too late after your parents blew you up. That's correct. Uh, when they when my dad said, oh, I blew up the kid. I now, wasn't going to make the joke. I you think had to. that. Um, I think that that what's funny <laughs> is, especially for our for our generation right now, we look back at Home Alone as this like gigantic franchise and hit. It was not popular amongst parents. Like that was a movie that parents like begrudgingly took their kids to see six times. That were like. This is like this kid is torturing these right. two like criminals in the house in gruesome ways that we are all like this is hysterical like we we were laughing at all of this shit, um, but yeah I think that I think that's a really good kind of turning point movie to to look at for this uh, uh, and I, I hadn't really thought of it as being kind of like that bridge but um, I don't know if your parents I not only liked remember Home that, Alone or not Nick I never I not only remember that time. It's one of the few, it's one of the few time like clear memories I have of every member of my family at the movie theater, and we went for my sister's birthday because Home Alone two opened up on her birthday, uh, and we all went to the theater. So there's like very clear like memory of that. Yeah. Um, and then if if I keep thinking about like the memories I have like with my family seeing a film that isn't Bad Santa, <laughs> another one that I would say is is Shrek. Ah. As bastardized as that movie has become, Shrek and all of its sequels were, you know, what was the the Minions juggernaut before Minions? Oh yeah, Shrek, Shrek is what saved DreamWorks. Uh, Shrek is life, and that's a that's like that's yeah, Shrek is love as well. The thing <laughs> about it is that's like that is the classic like shiny fairy tale characters on the box for kids, and you know counterculture adult hidden subtle adult jokes especially shrek underneath 2. a few uh, layers i, think, I, I yeah. still think shrek 2 is a uh is a a high point in the franchise for sure um you got your your phones working yep all right but um yeah i i think it's interesting and, and you know ben you mentioned earlier um on on the clip with the girls you you mentioned zathura which is kind of the next well, gen so, version so, of jumanji so, so yeah i i think that there was a sort of next uh, a move into that next generation which i i uh, that, that's personally like i love some of the movies that came out in the mid 2000s that were family uh family oriented films that, ha- that that were that were made with care and love, uh, especially adventures and babysitting. Uh, well, <laughs> you, you that's a kids movie, not not a family movie. I'm gonna I, as much as I love don't, that don't, movie. Don't fuck with yeah, the babysitter. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's aimed at at kids. Um, but uh, especially Sky High, and yeah, especially Z- yeah. Z- Z- Zathura. Uh, those are movies that are just so lovingly crafted and so well made that they, it, it, where it was, it, you know, it, it was clear that we had filmmakers and and that were actually trying to do a really good job of like we're, let's let's bring in the whole audience here. Yeah, I, I'll put I'll put two in there, and these are. And they're not cheats. We don't have the hard, fast rules for this stuff. But I, I think um, one I would put in is uh, is Peter Pan, the two thousand. Oh, Pan, uh, Pan not. With, oh, it was two thousand three. Yeah, two thousand three. Yeah. Two thousand three. Pan. Um, so good. With Jason Isaacs as Hook is like a fucking. It's so good. See, oh my god. My family. My family. My family watched Hook. A million times, and we watched the Kathy Rigby theatrical. Uh, <laughs> I watched live the both of those as well, but uh, <laughs> but but that that there was. I think you're right, Ben. There were these movies that were kind of happening in, from 2000 to 2010 that were that there was a lot of. It, it got back to that ennui kind of like emotion side of family. I think the yeah, 90s was exactly. very slapsticky and broad yeah, it was Airbud. 
and adventures. Because <laughs> if you could, if you're playing I, the drinking I, game right I, now, I just keep, drink keep bringing it back to Airbud. Like Airbud, you can be hammered. Um, like Pan, Pan falls in that. I think, um, and this, even though it's a little bit later, where the wild things are, um, yeah. I think is another one where oh, you have so these kind of, is, like. No one gonna say the. Is no one gonna say the Muppets? Are we gonna gloss I, over? I have Muppets, Muppets on Manhattan here. Manhattan I, I have the Muppets as kind of a long going franchise of absolute family. Those friendly are like fair. formative, formative family yeah. films. Like, follow that bird. The, I agree. Total the, family. I watched I, that a million the, times. I, I, I would say the irony is of the mid two thousands is that. All of the films we're talking about, none of them did well. Yeah, like n- like none of them uh, a- actually, you know, performed at the box office. They were busy making. Everyone's going to the Spy Kids franchise. It's funny how that hmm. changes over time because the, a lot of those movies would be like insta successful. Yeah, you know, like a, a lot of times, and that that's a lot of that's a lot another like a, a line I've drawn the sand about what makes a well, kids film. Unfortunately, a large portion of the of the movies that I would consider a quote unquote kids film are the cash grabs that are just a- animated and pushed through the system and aren't that good because now pretty much you make one of those and get distribution through a reputable you know studio and it will always make money even in like post pandemic times it's like almost guaranteed Sonic the Hedgehog you know is, is and now another huge family film banner I think you could Definitely group that in, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you've got you sure you have a lot of this. Um, you're kind of talking about that that the nostalgia right. again. You get that nostalgia feel, and I think that's a lot of family movies. They use that as well to bring in the audience to say, you know, that's that's part of why Christmas Story works, right? Is that we're as kids, we're watching this kid that is basically our parents when they were kids, and they're you know maybe not quite the the generation's a little bit split longer than that, but same as Back to the Future and that kind of stuff. You're watching. The families are watching it because the parents are getting that nostalgia itch and the kids are just like, we, we're interested in the story. Um, but I, I think like I think there's another really good um, a really great family movie in the 2000s um, that is leaning on kind of a lot of these tropes and stuff, which is Enchanted. Um, and, and I and I especially mm. like Enchanted because it was like it felt like it someone said okay kids really like these princess diaries movies but that's not really for like that's kind of for the parents but they're not quite getting it versus something like enchanted i think really and hit for Hathaway everybody is for everyone <laughs> i i will, everyone. i could make a very strong argument that the princess diaries are family is is family and not just it's kids movie but it's finding close. her family yeah it's it's it's, it's about genealogy. <laughs> I think the inclusion go. of of Julie Andrews is what makes it official to be family movie. And Hector Elizondo, because no Andrews. kid is showing up for Hector Elizondo. <laughs> not never. Not now. Not never. <laughs> what are you, the the lizard? What? You drinking out of drinking out of cups? So no, no this? way. The one thing that I do really think is um, kind of fascinating on the the family thing uh, as well, and I kind of I've watched this. It's funny because there's a dip in it, I feel, somewhat in the 90s, other than Disney was doing it. But I think the musical aspect really is another thing that there there are a lot of musicals that lend themselves to family viewing based on kind of th- that sing-along thing. Like, most recently, Greatest Showman is a huge family movie for a lot of people. Like, yeah, they're, that, that, like that's they're a really family good singing all kinds of stuff. And I think that's a... A thing for kids to be able well, to sing along I, with this. I think what happened is Newsies came out. Newsies oh. absolutely bombed and uh, and lost so much money for Disney, and they 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 weren't confident in doing a live action musical for a really long time. It, I, but they were also making a billion dollars off of Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and The Lion King, it doesn't which matter. were our musicals. Matter. It's the same thing. They're just done matter. in animation. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they they you know you've got kids they, singing they, Elton John. I mean, really, before the the actual musical Newsies came out and started circulating, I mean, like, how many people remembered Newsies? I mean, it, that was a complete. It was forgotten. Sorry, at the Max time. Casella. I I thought it was a rip off of Bugsy Malone, and uh, I didn't care for it. All I need is a few wow. more dollars, <laughs> and I'm out of here to stay. <laughs> Dreams come true. Um. So, are there is the Rocketeer a family film? Ooh, Joe Johnston's so, The Rocketeer. I think that's a great family film. I and I think, think that's a so. fucking oh! awesome, awesome Iron pick. Giant. 
Oh, That's of fun. course, of course. But I, let's go back to Rockets here for a second. Yeah, let's talk about the Rockets. You should always be talking well, about the Rockets. We, we should spend the whole episode on the Rockets here. It's another one that hits that, a lot. That it, dream cosplay for me. It, it hits cosplay. a lot of those beats again of like the the period piece. Like that's a that the idea of watching things from a They're period. They're Nazis in the Rocketeer. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's because the bad guys you know are bad. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. you know we it, should maybe revisit that now <laughs> in certain areas of we, the we, state. We stop. We stop making Nazis like just like the the central casting you know background bad guy. And was, at, at some point we lost sight. We stopped making Red Dawn. Yeah, well, let's go back to it. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, now we're back let's to Russians back again. To we skipped right over. Like, why didn't we get? We should have gotten round two of Nazis before we got round two of Russians. Like, I, I think we're really we're yeah. missing it. Well, well, mm. the, the Duffer brothers are holding it down until someone picks up the Nazis. So I saw someone that put on their list, uh, one of these lists on here, that uh, the Hunger Games as family movies. And I don't know why that made me laugh for uh, several minutes of just being like, hey, guys. And I understand we've got an, a young female protagonist, which is great. But it is a it is a series of movies about children massacre, like like literally like massacring kids. And I'm like, I don't think this well, is I want to show is. Ben wants to show his kids the Matrix. <laughs> but they're not killing kids in that, at least. But at least it's a strong female lead. They're killing... They're killing... They watch so much worse stuff. Uh, like like on YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just Cop. telling you at this I've, point. I've heard Have Luna say Cop? worse stuff. <laughs> time <laughs> Cop? <laughs> and I swear... show them Time Cop instead. <laughs> we'll, we'll show Please them show them Time Cop uh, instead. They'll never want to watch I, another like, R-rated movie. Listen, I was going to show you the Matrix, but now... You get fucking John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> you should. All right, girls. Your your uncle Nick's gonna show you. Time. Oh. You need to purposely show them like R-rated movies they're gonna hate. So like we don't want we don't want to watch any more R-rated yeah. movies. Licorice pizza. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> how about Dances with Wolves? That's a good R-rated movie. No, for that's PG thirteen. Oh, it is. Yeah. Shit. What was what was Ishtar rated? Uh, PG-13, Not watchable. I think. <laughs> Mr. Pizza, what was that? What was that? <laughs> I think I did watch that one as a kid. Oddly enough, I'm, I'm not. So I'm not <laughs> oh, sure where we are in the conversation, but I, there Nowhere. are there are and some, everywhere. Uh, yeah, of course, here, there, and everywhere, just like the Beatles song. Um, Hugo, the Martin Scorsese yeah. film. Um, I, I do think that there was an interesting. I. I, I and really this is, pretty this, is movie. this is coming from somebody who's not a Martin I Scorsese. I, I am actually not a Mar- Martin Scorsese fan. I really love Hugo because it's a love letter to filmmaking and it's a love letter to family yeah, because films. That, because because when you jerk off cinema, you win an Oscar, and it didn't. It still didn't work out for him. So sorry. Yeah. That was gosh, wow. Really I was, I was just I was hardcore. Trying, trying to get an, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come across. <laughs> I just I, I didn't I mean to like come I'm, across as better, I'm but just more. fuck Martin Scorsese. Fuck you, Martin Scorsese. I'm, I'm, fuck I'm your fighting. Oscar. I hope you've gone your whole life without getting an Oscar. How dare you make a, normally, a love letter to cinema to, to pander to the Academy? But normally, I don't care. But I don't care that much. Normally, listen. Normally, I am not fighting to get a word edge edgewise, but you guys are 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 coming in hot, and I I, I went too aggressive. I regret it. I, I mistakes were made. Take down Hugo of all properties. <laughs> I just, Such a sweet it felt film. Pandering to me. It was uh, I, thought, pandering, I thought it was a very sweet it was, movie. It was Tim trying to win an Oscar. I, I think I every movie think so is him all. trying to win an Oscar in general. But I don't know. I think it's I a think really he's sweet movie. To win an Oscar. I, I think it's a very sweet movie. I think he's trying to win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> you should show the girls Goodfellas. And then work your way up to yeah. Hugo. Like, yeah. if you guys like this, you're going to love Scorsese. Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, I love the steady cam scene in Hugo where they go through the kitchen and the clock. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm going to let you guys talk because I have to wax poetic for a little bit about the best family movie that's come out in the last 20 years uh, at some point. So, no, no, go for it. Let's hear it. You want to hear it now? Yeah, we're, we're, running, we're, running, we're running out of time. I, I, I have already talked I, about. I, I vote we wait. I, I have, vote we wait. 50, I have 50. already talked about it on the podcast before, but for those who have not seen it, please, please, like, and this is if you have kids, if you don't have kids, uh, w- just watch it. Oh my god! The kid who would be king, 
It's a movie that was directed by Joe Cornish, written by Joe Cornish, British director. He did Attack the Block, which is a great, great fun film. Why are you laughing, Matt? I just, I, I it, he's it, thinking of he think of the adult who wouldn't be queen. No, 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 I, I was actually for half a second thinking about one that I forgot to do, and I, I can't remember. Oh, it Goofy was, movie. You know, it was called it was called uh, Nationals, and it, that was for aliens. Uh, anyway, but I also was thinking that Ben has brought this up on this 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 movie yes, on the podcast I, I, many times, so, and every so time times. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta remember I that on my list, and so, then so I, he, I forget. Here's the thing about this film: it, it, it's it's total wish fulfillment, and I think that's what family films do really well is that they they put kids into an empowered situations where the kids now have the ability to effectively, uh, you know, uh, change the situation that, that, that's put in front of them. And w- the kid who would be king is basically a, re- a redoing of the Arthur thing, where it's like, so so it stars Andy Serkis's, uh oldest son, and he finds Excalibur. Doesn't realize it's, it's a Excalibur, and then it's all of the stuff that falls out from there. And Re- Rebecca Ferguson is Morgana, and th- there's so much good stuff. Like Sir Patrick Stewart plays uh, the old version of uh, of uh, uh, of Merlin. It- it's so smart and so like just every Spoiler single alert. every single frame just makes me feel so happy. I'm like I I can't believe that Spoiler they alert. actually made this for for. And it's all, it's four kids. It's four kids, and it's four families. So it's a kids' film. It's a kids' film, but it's oh. a family film. Made oh. by kids oh. for kids. I thought you were about do to you know do... know mine number I, one is, Matt, Matt? Matt, were you about to do the, the Patrick uh, sound effect on me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I I actually forgot to have that one on here. I did forget. I, I don't know that I can ever use it again after I used it against him, and he was so hurt <laughs> that I would do that to him. But uh, no. no, no. Anyways. I, 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 I have no... I, I have not seen the movie, but I think anything that is... Um, it it is. I'm finding it rarer for us to find these family I, movies I, that we're really passionate about nowadays. I think but, it's but, good. But, that think, but, but, but again, I, I I I've never seen. I have not seen a better family film literally in the past twenty years than the kid who. Yes, you have. Seen. Yes, you have, and I'm going to use your own logic. Uh-oh. And you're going to agree. And you're going to agree. Same exact. Are you going to talk about the Incredibles? Exact... Because I thought we were going to no. take out all the of Matrix those films. rebooted. No no, 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 no. I'll give you a hint. It's it is animated. Uh. And it won an Oscar. Missiles versus the machines. What? What no. is it? Spider Verse, baby. What, what is more? Mm. Which fulfillment that like okay. anyone anyone could be under the mask? It's a it's a it's a family story. When you talk about Prowler and Miles and his dad and the family of Spider Man's, I think that's the best family film I've ever seen. Hmm. And it's also the best Spider Man movie. That's my vote. I can, I can, I can. No, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I, I understand. Can, I can get on board with that. I, I think it's, you know, it's. I think no should, I, I really think you should watch uh, the kid who would be king. Nah. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> uh, that's right. I, 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 but here's the thing. It sounds like like watching a fan, like sitting down to watch it. a family I'll film, sounds like a fucking task, but it really isn't. It, it's such and, and um. I, I feel no, bad. No, after that I, uh, orgasmic review, I'm, no, I'm not going to it I, And I also feel bad because I, I forget uh, Andy Serkis's son's first name, but he is so no good. One knows. Yes, no Sounds one knows. a little hot. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Scared myself. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's so, it is such an exceptional film. It's a film. Are you I mean, Googling like, Elon Musk, Matt? What is that? What? Who is that? Are you Googling Elon Musk? First of all, you can't see my screen. <laughs> How dare yeah, you? Yeah, I can. No, you can't. Oh, wait, you can, actually. <laughs> yeah, I can. I was, I was Googling uh, again, the, yeah. the kid who would be king to find out. Uh, oh, uh, oh, it's yeah. Lewis Ashbourne Circus. Lewis? 
Louis. Louis Ashbourne Circus yeah. plays, uh, I don't know, it was a, a circus's yeah, kid. It, yeah, he's Andy Circus's kid, but he is so phenomenal in the movie. And just uh, and the guy who plays Merlin is just so good and just so when did magnetic. It come out? came out in 2019. And to you take didn't it tell me Merlin you didn't than... tell me that Nate from Ted Lasso is in that movie. Yeah, you're, you're burying the lead uh, on that one. Yeah, yeah. He's he's How dare you. It, it's so, it's so so much fun, and it, it really is my favorite uh, family film I've seen really in the last twenty years, and, and I think it it's it's just so well constructed, and, and it, it's all Joe Cornish. Uh, he wrote it. He's the one who presented it, and it lost a ton of money. <laughs> and I feel so bad because there are not going to be movies made like that anymore. Uh, but I, I just re- stick to hens, buddy. I just remember watching it and just being like, "Wow!" I I, I want I wanted to rewind myself twenty years to put myself into a kid's shoes to watch to to experience that and to feel like I was in the, their shoes at that point. And and uh and you're saying it's better than a kid in King Arthur's Court? <laughs> Nothing's as good as a kid in King Arthur's Court. I mean court. Or, I'm not I mean, saying anything else. Or a rookie rookie saying. of the year? Not rookie fam not a fan year. not a family movie. Definitely a kids movie. Yeah, I it, the, it's it's so funny that So that here's the thing about that. Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the uh, Year same uh, type of wish fulfillment. Yeah. But can uh the, the uh Kid Who Would Be King, much better fulfillment. Okay. Saying a lot. Family film? Yeah. 100%. I, and I think it's, again, any of, I think, I, I think one of the absolute easiest, like, keys to being a family movie is anything that is set in a different, in not the time period that it comes out in. I think that idea of removing it from what we know so that you're you're forced to be looking at the interactions of it. I think, Nick, you, you nailed it of talking about, like, what are the Duck messages titties? of what's that? Oh, I thought I thought you were going to say duck titties. No, no, no. I just think I think the idea of met the messages of them. That's one of the reasons I love Sky High. I think Sky High is a, a great fun movie, but it also has really good family message in it about your identity and about you know interacting with your parents. And I think that's a big part of of these ones that really succeed well. They do a great job with the message that's more than. You know, like Honey, I Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is fun and silly, and yes, there's a little bit of the message of the kid wanting to fit in, and the the two families are from sort of different walks, and in kind of getting through that. But it's 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 not handled with like a you know a deft hand. It's it's just like whatever the easiest kind of story arcs on it. Versus these movies that really have these moments that I think will breed great conversations. It's one of the reasons why I I love um, Miss Marvel. Which I think is, and I think we're moving toward. I think with these streaming services now, and especially Disney Plus, I think that's where we're going to find a lot more of this family content. Maybe not so much in the. I think the movies are going to be big spectacle, animated things, and our superhero stuff. But I think these smaller family stories that we used to kind of get in the '80s, I think those are going to be showing up on the on the small screen. And the Roku channel. Is the Weird Al Yankovic movie going to be a family movie? You think? I think uh, definitely one hundred percent. It's not a family movie, but it's one hundred percent going to be a family movie because I'm watching that with my entire family. <laughs> Do you, we're going to buy a Roku TV. We're gonna <laughs> Weird Al. Weird Al is going to fuck in that you're, movie. You're, you're, I am. I'm sure of one thing of 2022 on my bingo card. We are going to see Weird Al fuck in that movie. <laughs> oh my god! Listen, 2022. Diagnosed with cancer <laughs> and cancer remission, yeah. re-hospitalized for a blood clot, uh, out of hospital. Gonna watch. Weird Al fuck. Gonna watch Weird, Weird Al, Al fuck. fuck. <laughs> with the kids, <laughs> with the whole kid, with the whole family. So, so I get this a wash. Wait, yeah. Well, I, I I would say it's a win. I mean, first of all, I mean, did you see his ass on that poster? I mean, we have Weird Al sex symbol coming back to us in a way that I didn't know I needed this in my life, but I, I need this in my life. You um, I think that is going to wrap up our discussion on on basically on what aren't family films. Uh, but, but last last little point. So yes. I I watched uh, uh, the Lost City with uh, my daughters. Um, because they had heard about it and they they wanted to to, to watch it, and 
I, I, I I'd heard the Velocity with uh, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. Oh, the the <laughs> remake of uh, Jewel and I, uh, Romancing uh, yeah, the Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romancing the Stone basically is what. what it Not is. Velocity. Um, <laughs> I will say, I thought it was a well-made movie. Okay. Um, mm. and, I thought it and, looked good and, and per- perfectly acceptable. And there is no reason why you should watch that with your children because Wh- it's. What did they think about seeing Harry Potter as the villain? Did that register that, for them? I think that's the reason why they wanted to watch it. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Because they're like, well, Daniel Radcliffe is in it, so it's got to be good. Well, now you got to show them Swiss Army Man. <laughs> I think Luna would love. If you tell Luna there's a movie where, where Harry Potter farts himself across the ocean as a man <laughs> rides him like a jet ski, she's going to pay you money to watch that movie. Yeah. The corpse of Harry Potter. I uh I I just now I'm I haven't I haven't really processed that yet. And now that you say that, this makes a lot of sense. I think that this is uh I, I wouldn't do I, it. I, I'm gonna watch I that movie again it. and then uh determine whether or not I'd bring that over to the, <laughs> to the house and watch it with your kids. But anyways, I, uh, uh, I, I would I, say I wouldn't. by the way, Lost City, totally fun for disposable fun, but uh also like way too violent for your kids. Not a family movie. Okay. I don't think that was on anyone's family movie list. It, everyone says it's like, oh, it's a great family movie. It's like, oh yeah, well, Brad Pitt gets killed by a headshot. Like like, just like a cum blood, shot? <laughs> blood splatters all over Chang Tim's face, so <laughs> Well, I mean like I find co- that like funny. the Cohen Brothers movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure the girls burn after reading. I think they would really like that. I think that's a good another good R rated movie for them. Like, what kid doesn't like John Malkovich? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think that'll do it for us. Uh, hopefully, you found Wait, some. Matt, will, are you, you, will, will it really? Are you, Matt? What? Are you are you are you googling Doctor Oz donation? I, I well, I wanted to see where my donation You're donating went. Donating a Doctor Oz. I got to donate no, again. You should vote, you should tell all your you should tell all your friends in Pennsylvania to jo- vote for John Fetterman, Matt. John Fetterman. Oh no, no, they're all. I, well, Doctor Rick is voting for another Catholic. doctor because he's, he's qualified. He's, he's, he's a qualified post, doctor, don't man. Don't worry. Just cut it in post. It'll be All right. fine. Nah, it's fine. Uh, I want to thank you so much for listening to the New Way Podcast. <laughs> we'll be back with new episodes sometime. Talk to you later. And cheers. Cheers. cheers.